friends, I'm Rosa, welcome. We're back on the floor today. I actually found out that I liked sitting on the floor a lot for the unhaul that I did. So I set up the setup, whatever, again. It's cozy down here, it's nice. I'm not sitting on a chair that constantly makes noises, which I like. That's definitely a plus in my book, so we're back. But today I have a book haul. These are books that I have gotten over since the last one, so that was in November, I think, or maybe like start of December. It's been both Christmas, but also it was my birthday last week, and so I gathered enough books, collected enough books again to do a book haul. I don't know how many books I have. I'm gonna count them quickly. I just see four stags, that's it. It could possibly be three. I just don't wanna accidentally tip them over, you know? But 24 books, I think, about 24 books. So I just got rid of like 26 in the book haul and they're basically all bag again. I haven't even gotten rid of the books. They're still like, <laughs> they're still next to me. Well, some of them are, it's fine. They'll be picked up at some point. But I think like 11 of them or something are special editions. I always get surprised with how many special editions I get over two months. Like it doesn't really make any sense to me, but I think some of these are also from November boxes. So yeah. We're gonna get started though. What should we start with? I actually know which one we're, okay. This one I've been so excited for because I cannot believe that I somehow managed to get the sequel to this book on Waterstones. It's the only, well now I have two Waterstones books, but it was the only Waterstones edition that I had and I got it by pure coincidence because it sold out so quickly and I just happened to check at some point, like an hour and a half after they sold out, I happened to check the website to see what it looked like and it was still in stock, so I purchased it. And then I got an email for this one a while after, I think. Oh wait, no, we have 25 books. <laughs> there was another one on my table. Anyway, <laughs> but I got a fourth wing from Waterstones, so it has these edges. And I believe it also has, yeah, the map as end paper artwork, which is kind of funny because it's not the end paper artwork in Iron Flame. I've been nervous to purchase from Waterstones because I've heard that they're very bad at replacements, so it's a thing. But these go together. If you line them up like this, they go together. It's maybe like a little bit difficult to see, but they actually do, which is very, very cool. And so I'm hoping that I'll be able to like build on this picture that they're making with the edges. I love the edges. I think they're very fitting for um, Fourth Wing as well. But in case you don't know Fourth Wing, I'm assuming you do. We follow, it's like new adult, adult fantasy romance, and we follow Violet, who is sent off to dragon flying school, even though she was supposed to be a scribe. The thing is, it's very, very dangerous to do these trials to become, or this like, I don't know if you will call them a trial, it's kind of like a competition, trials, exams, testings and stuff to become a dragon rider. It's very, very dangerous, very, very deadly. And not everyone survives, everyone knows this. But she's basically thrown into it without a warning as well by command of her mother. And um, one of the quadrant squad leaders or something, quadrant leaders, I don't know, hates her, seemingly, and what else is there? Dragons, of course. Rebels. There might be something going on at this school that's a little bit iffy. And it's just cool. It's a lot of action and it's very cool. So I had a, t I had a good time with Fourth Wing. I'm very nervous to read Iron Flame, but we'll see when I get to it. I got this for my birthday, so my friend has sent me like three collector's editions now. I have Akotar and I also have Throne of Glass and she sent me Shadow and Bone for my birthday last week, which is a stunning, beautiful, oh, she's so pretty. I wish they did the sequels as well in this edition. That would make me so, so happy. It has a ribbon bookmark. It has this like leathery kind of page. Like, I don't know, it's not leather, but it's just leathery. It's very interesting. Beautiful art right there as well. I love this like black, white, gold theme that's got, that it's got going on. It's very nice. Every page has like, you know, it looks like this. And Alexis. I kind of want to reread these books as well. There's also a bit of like a chapter header that looks like that. So beautiful, beautiful edition. Like she is truly, truly stunning. The front looks like this in case you're curious. And um, I'm very, very excited to be displaying this on my shelves. I Can I remember how to summarize Shadow and Bone? Do I need to? I don't think I need to. It's YA fantasy. There's a big evil dude. 
It's got like light and dark powers. There's some evil going on. There's a school for magic as well. And we follow Alina who has sun powers. It's the only one who's currently alive. She has sun powers. She's a sun caller. And I don't know what else I can say. Honestly, I don't know how much is mentioned in the synopsis for that book. So that's where I'm going to leave it. <laughs> just in case you haven't read it or haven't watched the Netflix series or you've just avoided <laughs> completely somehow miraculously avoided the story. I'm gonna leave it there. Okay. For my birthday I also got Yumi and the Nightmare Painter by Brandon Sanderson which I've heard many lovely things about. So it's nice. We're gonna read the back because it's it's nice. There is a world, one of endless nights surrounded by an even deeper darkness, filled with nightmares come to life, twisted shapes that slink to windows and ease open doors, sliding across the floors to look down on helpless faces. There is another world, a bright world, so bright it burns, filled with stacked stones that call forth miracles, raised by calloused hands that tremble in their work, drained with each stone lifted, settled, lifted again. Between these worlds, two souls connect, collide, entwine, a bridge, a path, a road to both worlds changing forever. So I've heard lovely things about this. It's supposed to be a part of the Cosmere universe as well. I think, what was it, book 29 <laughs> more specifically? But I don't really know. I've also not really, um, I've read like some of The Way of Kings and that's basically it. <laughs> But I do have, like, it's on my to-do list or to-read list for 2024 to finish that book. So we're going to get reintroduced to the Cosmere universe this year, which I'm very excited for. Because what I read of The Way of Kings, I loved. So I'm excited to um, get back into that at some point. But yeah, very excited to have Yumi and the Nightmare Painter. So thank you to my brother for that one. Also, nice end pages. Very nice. It's, you know, they got to do this more for, like, standard copies. They really do. But... Adult fantasy, in case you were wondering. Another book I got for my birthday. I got The Bone Season by Samantha Shannon, which is the 10th year anniversary, the 10th? 10th anniversary special edition. That's what they call it. Fully revised with new material. I am Paige Mahoney. I am the Pale Dreamer. The year is 2059. For two centuries, the Republic of Sion has led an oppressive campaign against unnaturalness in Europe. So I believe this is YA fantasy, but we follow Paige, who is actually a criminal, and she's taken prisoner, and basically she's at Oxford, where she's like taken to Oxford, and these Sion people need to use her abilities for stuff, and I don't know. I'm excited for this. I feel like I'm curious to see how Samantha Shannon handles YA because I really, really loved The Priory of the Orange Tree. So I think maybe she's also grown a lot as a, as a writer between this series and that. If that one came out after, which I'm assuming it did, wasn't it 2019? I have to check now. This, oh, I'm annoying like that. <laughs> yes, 2019. So a lot can happen in like, if the first one came out in 2013, a lot can happen for a writer in six years, you know? So I'm excited to see, and then even further, because this is like revised and everything. So I'm very excited to see and to read what's going on in this one. Then we have some special editions. We got several special editions. Let's just, let's start with this one. Because the third one in the trilogy, I hope it's a trilogy. Because that means I finished the, the, I finished collecting the books. The Atlas Complex by Olive Blake. And this is the Illuminate edition, which goes with the other two that I also have. Look at all this foil, like, <laughs> there's so, so much foil on this. It's nuts. It's, ha, huh, it's so much. The edges look like this and we have as well hollow foil on the naked cover which again i hope the camera is kind of picking up on the colors but i don't know it's always a bit funny with these studio lights and we also have these like gorgeous gorgeous end pages i have not read the sequel yet but i will <laughs> i will read it i think i own it on my ipad possibly or maybe i don't maybe i borrowed it from libby I'll get to them eventually, but I really wanted to finish like collecting the trilogy, even if I hadn't read the um, the sequel. Didn't actually fully enjoy the first one, but I'm very excited to see where the series goes because I enjoyed the ending of the first one. Do you know what I mean? So like, I'm a bit like, well, I kind of need to know. 
<laughs> but can I explain what the first book is about? The Alice Six? We follow six students who have gone to the Alexandrian Society to protect the library and also to study there or to just... The thing is only five of them can be accepted so they kind of have to... There's they kind of have to compete with each other. What they're not told is that the last person, the one who's not accepted into the society, actually gets to... And, um, yes. It's kind of strange and there's a lot of science talk in it and a lot of it is basically gibberish and, <laughs> I don't know, a lot of pretentious characters as well, so if that's not your thing, don't go into it. I was having a hard time with the characters for the vast majority of the book. I think there was one, and I think this is like a general consensus with the Atlas Six, there's only one character in the book that's actually likable and even him, you have some issues with him. But, yeah, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. I think I kind of liked one of the other characters a little bit, but even she was like a little bit annoying too. So we'll see how it goes though. I'll get to the sequel at some point. If you've read it, let me know your thoughts on it though. Like warning maybe? I don't... <laughs> If you want to give me one, if you feel like you need to give me one, feel free to. We have another Illuminate edition. I think this was the December book, The Principle of Moments by Esme Jakimi Pearson, which I'll be honest, like I don't actually fully know what this is about. This is adult sci-fi and I suck at sci-fi. I mean, the Alice Six kind of has sci-fi elements, I suppose. I don't know. 60, 66, 6... I confused myself for a second, hold on. 6066. Like year 6066. Like you say 2024, 6066. It just sounds so weird. <laughs> In Emperor Thra. Thraken? In Emperor Thraken's brave new galaxy, humans are not citizens but indentured laborers working to repay the debt they unwittingly incurred when they settled on Garan, a desert planet already owned by the Emperor himself. Ashka Akindele. Akindel? I can tell. I don't know names. Like, I don't know names. No, she's just another voiceless cog working the assembly lines that fuel his vast imperial war machine. Her only rebellion, studying stolen aeronautics manuals in the dead of night. Aeronautics manuals? Aeronautics. But then a cloaked stranger arrives to deliver an impossible message and her life changes in an instant. 1812. Obi Amadi is done with time traveling. Never mind the fact he doesn't know how to cure himself of the temporal sickness he caught whilst anchoring his soul to Regents in London, the one that unmakes him further with every jump. Or if the prince he loves will ever love him back. Or why his father disappeared. He is done. Until he hears about the ghost of a girl in the British Museum, a girl from another time. When Obi's path tangles with Asha's and a prophecy awakens in the cold darkness of space, they must voyage through the stars, racing against time, tyranny, and the legacy of three heroes from an ancient religion who may be awakening, reincarnated in ways beyond comprehension. I wonder what ancient religion they're talking about? Three heroes? Is it one that we know? I don't know. I'm curious. Anyway, if you want to see some cool customizations. The, the cover is also different from the standard cover. What? We have foil with a quote on the naked book which says courage is the only thing stronger than fear and love is the thread that holds the atoms of this universe together. And then we have end pages that are stunning. Very beautiful. And in the back they look like this and I still think this is like a reimagined version of the White House. I'm convinced. But it's probably just the museum that they're talking about. <laughs> probably just the museum. <laughs> anyway, we'll see when I get to this one. I am generally not that good with sci-fi. I don't know what it is. I just like the nature elements of fantasy, I suppose. <laughs> Whereas space, like I love Star Wars, but it's never really got me the same way that Lord of the Rings does. You know what I mean? Yeah. I'm sure I'm not the only one. Like someone out there completely understands my point there. It's just, it is the way it is. We have a fairy loot version, or <laughs> version? <laughs> Edition. We have The Scarlet Alchemist by Kylie Lee Baker, which I believe has a completely redesigned cover, but I could be wrong about it, so don't quote me on it. I do feel like with this one, it's stunning. Like, she's beautiful. And they did have to go with gold foil for the letters, but sometimes when I look at it, the title just goes missing. Do you see what I mean? Like, it's just gone. And that confuses me a little bit. It is beautiful though. We have edges that are also beautiful. However, I'm a little bit tired of them just taking a picture and putting it on the edge. It's a hotter scape thing though. So it is what it is. But 
there's more customizations. She's gorgeous. We also have gorgeous end pages and we have more gorgeous end pages. I don't know why she's, she looks like she's sneezing or picking her nose very discreetly. I don't know, could be either. Who knows? The principal rule of alchemy, you cannot create good without also creating evil. So this is about a girl who dabbles in alchemy, but she's performing illegal alchemy because she resurrects the dead. And then she travels to the capital to take part of these like imperial exams. But while being there, she's approached by, what do they call him? Crown Prince titles? Yes, crown prince. Because he thinks that there might be an assassination attempt taking place soon. So he needs some help. And while she's dragged into this, she realizes that things are pretty weird in the royal family. There's some things going on. So we have YA fantasy still stunning. She's beautiful. There is no good without evil. Absolutely captivating, says Kirkus, whom I don't know. Anyway, want to read this at some point. We'll see. We will see. She's a bit heavy, I'm just saying. I'm a little bit heavy. Oh, this one I don't know how to summarize at all. But another fairy loot edition, we have Swordcatcher by Cassandra Clare, which has the redesign cover, obviously. These stunning, beautiful, amazing edges. What in the... I've been wanting city edges for the longest time. Ever since they had Threadneedle, I don't know what edition it is, but it has the London skyline or something like that on the edges. <sighs> I love those edges. I love them so much. I don't own a copy of it, but beautiful. Whenever I see it, I'm like, oh, that is so good. <laughs> so I'm happy to have some city edges, <laughs> but do I know how to summarize this? No, not no, I don't. Uh, not even a little bit. <laughs> it's something about rebels and there's um, a dude who has to be, it's adult fantasy. It's Cassandra Clare's first adult fantasy, but he's like, hired to be like a double for the prince or what is his title one was raised to rule one was trained to die welcome to the chronicles of castellane is a crown prince because like prince connor yes so he's trained to be a sword catcher and i believe that this is connor no this is connor and this is kill and then there's a girl who may or may not be a part of the rebels Assassination attempt brings her and Kel together. Yeah, there's some about a ruler of the criminal underworld as well. So I don't know. I want to read this at some point, but we will see when it happens. Um, probably when the ebook goes on sale on Amazon. <laughs> because this is a chunky one, okay? I'm not gonna buy the original hardback because it's gonna take up so much space on my shelves. She's chunky, okay? We're just gonna stick to the fairy loot editions, but. I'm very excited to have this copy. They do look alike. Yeah, they do. I actually thought they were twins when I first saw this cover because I had it spoiled before I opened it myself and I was like super confused. Um, but I guess that means they just found the right person to play Swordcatcher. Yeah. Oh, I got this from my brother for Christmas, a Tomi by Junji Ito, which means that I have Tomi and Uzumaki. And now I just need, what's the last one? It has three. Jiyu? Is that what it's called? The last one of the deluxe editions? So Tomi is about a girl who keeps coming back to life after she is murdered. Can I say this this far into the video without getting demonetized? I hope so. <laughs> but she's murdered. Time and time again, she's murdered. I think she drives men crazy. Murdered again and again. One girl always comes back for more. Tomi Kawa Kawakami is a femme fatale with long black hair and a beauty mark just under her left eye. She can seduce nearly any man and drive him to murder as well, even though the victim is often Tomi herself. While one lover seeks to keep her for himself, another grows terrified of the immortal succubus. But soon they realize that no matter how many times they kill her, the world will never be free of Tomi. I'm super excited to get into his graphic novels. What'd you call them? Yeah. I mean, technically, I think this is actually like a series, but I don't really know. I don't know. But I'm super excited to get into his universes at some point. I am an avid horror fan when it comes to books. So, I mean, when it comes to movies, I haven't really gotten into the book aspect of it yet. Um, so I'm very excited to at least like have some options when it comes to manga and we'll, we'll see. No one escaping. No use escaping Tomi. We still got some special editions. <laughs> We have plenty more special editions. We have Starling House, which I hope I haven't featured in a video already, but I think this arrived after I recorded the last book haul. 
If not, she can have her second moment. Look how pretty she is. Like, that's okay. <laughs> this is Alexi Harrow Illuminated Edition. Has a transparent dust jacket, which is so funky when they do that. I like how they did it this time as well, so you can like see the house in the background. And there's just like birds and plants over here. Isn't there plants too? Yes, some plants, but like mainly birds. And in the back as well, you can see the house with a quote in front of it. It has a little bit of foiling on the naked cover as well. I'm currently actually reading this, which is why it was on my table. This was the book that was on my desk. So we also have edges that are stunning. So beautiful, so detailed, so crisp. Ooh, they're so very nice. We have end pages. They're the same in the front and the back with our two lead characters. And I believe, oh, no signature. I forgot, but it does have some kind of letter, which I don't know is like standard in this book, but yeah. So I can actually tell you what this is about because I am currently reading it. We follow our lead girl who is drawn to this house that it's in Eden. I think the city's called Eden or the place. Yeah, the place is called Eden. It's not a city. It's like a little town. They have this house that is taking up a lot of space in Eden's history and everyone seems to know for sure that it's haunted. Like there's something mysterious going on with this house. It's owned by the Starlings. That's why it's called Starling House. The whole way that it was like built and taken over and everything is super odd. Like there's definitely an air of mystery around it and new starlings keep showing up as well quite often to this house <laughs> as like as if like the starling family just keeps expanding somehow but anyway our lead girl is one of those people who's drawn to the house like she just she's just like there's a connection somehow so she goes to the house and when she gets there she's first rejected by the guy that's currently living in it and then later on she's offered a job which she instantly takes because it has a very nice it has very nice pay and also she's trying to make sure that her brother is fed and also can go to school and get an education and everything so but people are asking questions about the house while she's there they're very curious and very eager to talk to her because some weird things are going on with this house so super strange it's very like Definitely has like an air of mystery to it. I'm about this much into it. So we'll see where it goes. I kind of want to continue it today because I'm behind. We're doing a read along of it and I'm so behind. <laughs> I'm always behind on the read along. It's like, what's wrong with me? <laughs> we'll work on that. It's like a promise to myself. What's it called? A New Year's resolution. That I'll get better at keeping up with. <laughs> with the read-alongs. Another hardcover that I actually purchased this one on Vinted. It was 40? It was only 40. This is pretty nice condition for an otherwise very old hardback and I didn't own it already. So Bane Chronicles, which is a part of this Shadowhunter universe by Cassandra Clare, YA fantasy. This follows Bane, obviously, as you can tell. Magnus Bane, who's a warlock in this universe. He's kind of like a character that shows up in more or less all of the... He showed up in at least three of them so far. So I'm guessing he's also going to show up in, in this The Last Hours trilogy. But so far he showed up, I'm pretty sure he showed up in Lady Midnight as well. He definitely showed up in the Mortal Instruments, but also in the Infernal Devices. So he's just like this like character that always comes back. I love Magnus. I think he's a great character. And I'm very excited to see what these books or these stories are about. They have like these pages in between sometimes. I don't know. We'll see. I think they're short stories, just chronicles collected in one book. So we'll see about them at some point. But it was very nice to find that copy on, on Vinted. And it arrived super quickly. We have a duology that I got for Christmas that is from Ellen McCrate that I'm so, so happy I can finally take out of the closet because these arrived sometime in November, I think. And uh, my mom gave them to me, but she promised that I could check them and just make sure that everything was all right with them in case I needed a replacement because you can't get a replacement if you write them more than 30 days after you receive them and so I already saw them but I have to give them back to her so that she could give them to me <laughs> during Christmas. <laughs> it's fine. Okay, I'm so excited to have them. So we have the Muse of Nightmares duology He's, that's not what it's called. Strange the Dreamer duology by Lainey Taylor. These are YA fantasy. I have read Strange the Dreamer and I loved it so, so much. So I'm hoping that I love Muse of Nightmares as well, but this is like a beautiful, stunning book. 
both looks wise but also content wise these have redesigned covers this is the same artist that did the covers for house of earth and blood or just crescent city which i think is an interesting choice but i really i really like it both books are also signed by laney taylor which means i now have th i think both of them are yes i now have three signed books by lady taylor cool very cool <laughs> they have foil on the naked cover there's end pages with art on them and some in the back as well <laughs> lovely beautiful also both of them have edges the first one has blue um it's the same design just in different colors the other ones are more like orange definitely took inspiration from the original uk cover which is stunning so simple but so effective the other one i can't really show you the end pages because spoilers but we have at least a beautiful, nice cover. I'm pretty sure I can't show you the end pages. Yeah, no, I can't. <laughs> so, nope, not happening. But in uh, in Strange the Dreamer, we follow Strange, Laszlo Strange, who is working at a library. He is an orphan who has been brought to the library. So he's basically grown up there. He has an obsession, more or less an obsession, with this city called Weep. It's called Weep because nobody remembers what it's called, so they just ended up calling it Weep. And there's some strange things going on in Weep, like there's this gigantic bird flying over the city. Not flying, it's it's like a plane, but it's a bird. <laughs> okay, yes. And um, again, people don't remember what the name of the city is. Like, strange things are happening, but like he's obsessed with this plane to the place, place. To the point that he learned the language that they speak. In Weep without ever having been there or without knowing that he was ever gonna go there. So one day a guy who's actually making a team to take to Weep finds Laszlo and he's like you're coming with me. So they go there and while while he's at Weep he's having dreams of this blue girl and there's a lot of moths and like other people might also be having dreams and nightmares of this blue girl and all the moths and questions. Beautiful, stunning, atmospheric book. I, yes, if you want something a little bit more like lyrical, beautiful, just not super fast paced, but just like vibes. This is gorgeous for that stunning book. So we have three more hardcovers, uh, I think. All three fairy loot. Let's start out with Feybound by Sara El Arifi, which was the December book, I think. So this is a recolor of the original one, which is like red. We have these edges that are beautiful. I still haven't gotten even tracking for the January book, which is kind of odd because I've already seen people had the book up on Vinted from like over a week ago. So I'm like, am I just not getting it? <laughs> like I paid for it. Where's my book? <laughs> I don't know. It's super strange, but we have foiling on the naked cover, both front and back. It's a vibe. It's definitely a vibe. We have end pages, also signed by the author. And the sister. I believe this is the sister. Yes, the sister on the back end pages. Also, we have reversible dust jacket art, also with the sisters. So, oh, I love this purple vibe. Oh, I might actually turn it around. I'm not gonna lie. Very much loving the purple vibe on this. Like, purple blue vibe. Ugh, oh, that's nice. As far as I know, this book is, like, fantasy but with romance and, like, heavy on the romance a little bit. Some people have even been calling it, um, I saw some people call it romanticy, but I think I need to read it before I start labeling it that. Because romanticy is not the same as fantasy with romance. Romanticy is basically, like, a romance but with fantasy. So, like, I don't know, but I do think it's heavy on the romance, though. Divided by blood, imprisoned by fate, bound by desire, welcome to the intoxicating world of the Fae. As far as I know, it's about two girls, two sisters, that, yeah, they're exiled from the elven lands, and they're forced into terrifying, the terrifying wilderness beyond the borders, and they get to the Fae court. I don't, yeah. There they encounter the impossible, the Fey Court. You're exiled from the Elven lands. How do you end up at the Fey Court? Are Fey not technically Elven? Are they not the same? The Fey haven't been seen for a millennium. I suppose not, but anyway. Torn between their loyalty to each other, their their Elven homeland, and their hearts. I'm guessing that um, love interests might be included in this story. So, I don't know. I hope the sisters stay friends. <laughs> like, 
<laughs> I cannot handle sisters starting to hate each other. I have two sisters. It just, no. I love sister stories though. As long as they stay friends. Like fight for each other. If any of my siblings were in danger, I would drop everything and go find them. You know what I mean? Like that's what I want to see. Sibling bonds that are just like strong, strong. <laughs> I don't know what that was, but let's move on. So this I'm actually also currently reading. I also was just told today that I will, I was a little bit nervous, I'm not gonna lie, but I will be getting a replacement for this book because it has like a long scratch on the dust jacket. I have What the River Knows by Isabelle Ibanez, which is YA fantasy. It has like a long scratch that you might not be able to see because of the light, but it runs like from all the way here down to the bottom. And I was so nervous that they were not going to replace it. It's very, very visible when you're holding it in your hands and looking at it. But they did say that they were going to. So that's nice, <laughs> I'm relieved. But we have uh, these beautiful stenciled edges in this coral kind of color, peachy coral kind of color, very nice. You don't often see that, but I like it. I like it a lot. Oh, taps. <laughs> this also has lots of foil on the naked cover, which is this like off-white, nature white, bone sort of color and beautiful end pages that are foiled as well and it also has inside dust jacket art by rosie thorns 88 who's one of my favorites this is gorgeous i love it, it it's beautiful whenever i see rosie thorns 88 on something i'm like i need it i don't care what it is i need it just like she's doing art for the the march book i'm gonna get the march book but also i found out what the march book is and I'm gonna need that book in my life, okay? It's just how it is. I thought I was done with uh, Fairy Loot YA books, but no, we're just, we're getting March as well. We'll see about April. So this book is about our lead girl whose parents basically are obsessed with Egypt for some reason. And then one day she gets a letter. Like they continuously, time and time again, leave her at home, wherever home is, I can't remember, but they leave her at home and uh, she's basically, in the hands of her caretaker and she's just like constant like can i not come with you can i come visit you and they're constantly like no and then one day she receives a letter that says that they've tragically passed so she takes off to egypt with her who is it her uncle or something and his helper or something like that maybe to find out what happened to her parents but i don't actually know so far <laughs> Oh yeah, she's got a ring. Her dad sent her a ring that she feels has some kind of magic to it and it flares up It flares up while she's in Egypt. So there's a thing about that too, like a, some kind of heirloom or something like that. And she's also finding that the, what was it? Guardian's assistant? The Guardian is her uncle, I think. But she's, he's, but he's very handsome. So that's the thing. I love the color of these edges. Like nice, very nice. Don't really see this color for edges like ever. So very nice. Anyway, I'm gonna continue reading this today. Um, I will say that so far, this is not a book review video, but so far <laughs> I've been very slow at reading this because I just don't feel like picking it up. Like, I don't know what it is. I don't know. Maybe it's just like slow or something. We'll see, but continuing this today. And then we have the last Fairy Lude book, the last hardcover as well. So also the last, no, there was another one, oops. But anyway, last fairy loot one at least, which is A Foul Hearts Huntsman by Chloe Gong, so YA fantasy. This is the sequel to Foul Lady Fortune. This one I really hoped that fairy loot was gonna replace because it's very hard to see, especially when I don't have the sequel next to it, but the edges are so, so blurry. As in like, I can see basically three layers of this pattern being placed not on top of each other, but like next to each other. I can see the tips on some of the swirls here multiple times, which means that it's not, the three layers of it aren't aligned and it looks so bad, but they didn't want to replace it and I don't know why. If I put them next to each other, you can see the difference so clearly. I might put a picture up so you can actually see it. If you're watching this on a screen that's big enough for it at least, um, I'm usually not like, like these like b little, little bumps here and there, whatever, but as soon as there's scratches on my front cover, or I had a, a recent Fairy Ludus book as well that had scratches on the naked cover that basically caused like, there was foil missing, um, but like just like little things, I'm not usually one to complain about it. Edges are so important, and these look so terrible, and it bothers me so much that they didn't want 
to replace it. This is basically like if you bought if you if I bought this shirt with a print on it, but the print is crinkled on the shirt and I took it back because I'd ordered it, I took it back and they did want to replace it while the print isn't what it's supposed to look like. Because it's so it's so bad in person. So I'm a bit like, well, gotta be a little bit careful with what you order from Theraloot, I feel like now. Because you can risk getting books that you really can't see very well on camera, but I promise you in person it's pretty bad. I was tempted to post it on Instagram, um, at least my story, not on the feed. But I didn't feel petty enough on the day to do it. <laughs> Maybe I'll do it at some point, I don't know. <laughs> but it's very bad. Whoever I've spoken to about it have said that it looks terrible. <laughs> so I'm like, it's not just me thinking so. It's also like, the more I look at the edges, the more annoyed I get. Anyway, but yeah. Um, I can't remember what Foul Lady Fortune is about right now, but it's about... I know that Rosal... Rosalind? Rosalind? Rosalind from The Silent Delights is the lead character in these books with a guy who I forgot... I forgot who he is. He's some kind of agent or something. Maybe. <laughs> um, but it takes place a little bit after The Silent Delights did and she has to be like a double agent or secret spy or something like that. I can't fully remember what it is. Loved These Island Delights, the duo though, so I'm very excited to be reading these books at some point. Um, but we'll see when it happens. So, but yeah. Just, um, I don't know. We gotta have a talk about theory loot at some point and because I see more and more people complaining about receiving their books damaged and theory loot still not wanting to replace them, but like you can't just be like, so you got a, a, a product that's that's flawed. Like, what are we supposed to do about it? You're supposed to replace it. I get that sometimes people do re complain about the smallest things, like the smallest bumps and stuff, that of course they can't replace everything, but like scratches on covers, edges that look this bad in person. Like, this is extreme when I place it next to my Foul Lady Fortune. It's extreme. You've sent me a copy that's maybe not damaged, but that wasn't created properly, and now I'm just stuck with it. It feels weird. Also because I can't actually buy a new one from the store because it's limited to one per person, and it's still in the store. I don't know, it's super odd. So you just, I feel like for me personally, I'm gonna be a little bit more careful with, uh, this is also one of the reasons that I kind of stopped with the YA box, but like I'm gonna get the March one. <laughs> um, but as soon as I run out of skips, that's it. I'm done with a YA sub because I'm now scared that I'll spend money on a book that'll arrive damaged in one way or another and they're just gonna be like, well, we don't think despite this following the replacement guidelines on our side, we don't think it's enough. I don't know. It's a bit. It's a bit. Yeah, it's a, it's a bit. <laughs> so I still have nine books. I still have nine books. We gotta speed this up a little bit. Consider Me by Becca Mack, which came out with a discreet cover instead of a half-naked dude, and that is lovely. This is like a hockey romance, which you can't tell, but it is. I think it's new adult. I don't know what this is about, other than it's probably, because it's a sport ro romance, it's probably an arrogant lead guy and then a lead girl who doesn't want anything to do with him, but the lead guy is used to getting his way, so he's like, never mind, now I want you. It's usually like that, isn't it? <laughs> I don't actually know. Olivia Parker isn't new to professional hockey players thanks to her best friend's boyfriend, but she has no interest in dating one herself, no matter how hot he is. And anyway, she loves working as a teacher and hanging out with her best friend, Drama Free. Why would she want to spend her time stroking the ego of an arrogant athlete? But once Carter meets Olivia, he can't think of anyone else, so he's had an easy time with the ladies, but too bad for him, Olivia is hell-bent on keeping him at arm's length, with no intention of giving, giving in to his charms. Perhaps it's time for Carter to up his game, after all, nobody ever said he had to play fair. Sparks will fly as Carter does whatever it takes for Olivia to consider him. I'm hoping that I'll like this one, so that I can get my hands on the other ones. Because, <laughs> you know, we can never have too many books, but... I know these are also on Kindle Unlimited, but I just prefer reading paperback. Which is actually stupid, because I don't actually prefer reading paperbacks these days, because I have back issues. I like to lie down while reading on my side, and I can't do that with paperbacks, but I just like holding the books in my hand still. It's difficult. So this one I got for my birthday, Butcher and Blackbird by Bryn Weaver, which kind of arrived on my TBR wishlist very quickly because 
I saw this got some traction on social media and I was just like, yep, that's for me. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> and then I got it for my birthday, so that's cool. But um, every serial killer needs a friend every game must have a winner. As far as I've understood, it's a romance between two serial killers. Yes. When a chance encounter sparks an unlikely bond between rival murderers Sloane and Rowan, the two find something elusive. The friendship of a like-minded pitch black soul. That sounds fun, doesn't it? Like, it's a little bit unusual. It's about ghosts as well. I'm excited. Can Rowan and Sloane dig themselves out of a game of graves or have they finally met their match? Also, I think it's a trilogy. So I don't, I think it's actually a series. I got the sequel to a book that I've not read, A Curse of Blood and Stone by Kaya Tucker. I cannot tell you right now. What, what's it called? I cannot even remember what the first one is called, which is kind of awkward, but I got the sequel for my birthday. So Fate and Flame. Yeah, I wish I could remember. Fate of Wrath and Flame. It's um fantasy romance. Romanticy, if you will. And I think I'll love it. So I'm very excited. And that's why I put the sequel on my wish list, even though I haven't read it yet. <laughs> Sometimes you gotta take chances, okay? Another sequel. Well, not really, because it's not the same people. It's companion novels, but technically it's a sequel. Pucking Wild by Emily Rath. This is uh, the sequel to... I forgot what the first one is called. <laughs> Wait, what's it called? Hold on. I got it. Pucking Around, which is Reverse Harem. This one, I don't think is. My name is Tess Owens, and my soon-to-be ex-husband is trying to set fire to my entire life. Unwilling to face the heat, I do what I do best. Run. Also hockey players, romance, probably some money. I'm excited. I just don't know what's in this, because she's thick. Like, <laughs> pucking, pucking wild or pucking around was like 800 pages? I'm confused what they're putting in romance books these days for them to be 600 pages. We got two more of those down here. So like, the, I don't know. Didn't romance used to be like 300? Like that was like standard. Now there's 600 pages. What is in this? I'm so curious. Anyway, June 1st by Jennifer Hartman. Another thick one. 600 pages, what is going on? <laughs> what? I'm not complaining because like it's more reading material. Like this'll definitely, it'll not be good for my Goodreads goal though. Cause this is basically two books. <laughs> Two books in one, you know what I mean? As a fantasy reader, of course, I'm used to it. But sometimes if I want something quick and easy to read, I'll read for, I'll read a romance and now I'm like, can't even do that. <laughs> Cause it's 600 pages. Okay, there's not a whole lot of text per page on this one. This is dark romance as far as I remember, but also I am pretty sure this might be about a brother and his stepsister. <laughs> I think, um, so a bit taboo maybe, we'll see. As far as I've understood, Jennifer Hartman does write dark romances, but like, it doesn't really scream dark romance, does this cover? It's like nice and chill and beautiful. Like this is, this is something they would have hanging in the spa, I think. We'll see, we'll see when I read it at some point. I kind of also am looking for books that'll crush me completely crush me. Like, will leave me broken for a couple of days. That's what I'm looking for. <laughs> don't recommend a little life to me. I know what you're writing in the comment section, right? Don't do it. Okay, stop. Stop yourself. <laughs> do not <laughs> recommend me anything else. <laughs> okay, so we have actually another dark romance that my brother, at my birthday, decided... He decided to grab this specific book and look up quotes for it while we were having pizza. So thanks, bro. Thanks for that one. And he read them out loud for everyone. I am very happy that I don't care what other people think about what I read. <laughs> like, I really don't care. I'm probably not gonna talk about the alien books with my family, probably, or the monster romance. I think that's where I, where my line is, but like, I don't care. I don't care. Like, I just don't care. My, my parent, we have a very, very relaxed relationship with, you know, um, so it's fine. <laughs> <laughs> like, out of all of the books, he decided that one, that's the one that I'm gonna quote while we're having dinner. He's a child, isn't he? He's a, he's a, he's a, how old is my brother? 29 year old child. Anyway, we have Corrupt by Penelope Douglas. New cover. I think this was, yeah, because it's the Devil's Night, a Devil's Night. So those covers are usually like black and white with a little bit of red. <laughs> on them but they have some this is just smoke they have like skulls on them and something like that but they were released in the uk by a publisher berkeley so they're now cheaper for me to get which is super cool because i 
like having paperbacks. I like that more UK publishers are picking up um, indie published books. Dreams might be a heart's desire, but nightmares are its obsession in the first novel of a dark romance series from New York Times bestselling author Penelope Douglas. I believe these were, maybe they're not independently published, but at least not published in the UK. I'm in Denmark, so most of our books that you get in bookstores are from the UK. If you want to order books online that are from the US, they usually cost more than UK copies. So it's nice that UK publishers are picking up more books, even if I'm not in the UK. Erica Fane knows her boyfriend's older brother is handsome, strong, and completely terrifying. A college basketball star gone pro, He's more concerned with the dirt on his shoe than he is with her. But she saw him, she heard him, the things that he did and the deeds that he did. Why are you care why do you care so much about your boyfriend's brother, Erica? Hmm. Should you be with your boyfriend if you care so much about his brother? I wonder. Anyway, we'll see where this goes. I think it's dark romance though. I'm pretty sure. Fairly certain. And then we have, and I don't know what's actually, what, like, what these are about. They don't match color-wise, which is so funny, because they were just released, <laughs> like, they definitely went for two different kinds of paper for these, which is funny. <laughs> it looks hilarious. Um, but Saving Six and Redeeming Six by Chloe Walsh, which is the third and the uh, third and the fourth book in the Boys of Tommen series. And these are like, this is floppy and this isn't, this is so weird. Do you see? <laughs> what? what is this? That is so strange. This is like typical UK paperback floppiness. As in like, there's none of it. There's n nada. None of it. How thick is this? Over 600 pages. Well, who would have thought? A romance that is over 600 pages. That's new, right? <laughs> this is almost a thousand. This is 930. What's in this? Well, no wonder they had to make it floppier. They had to make the paper thinner. Yeah, that makes sense. Okay, but I don't know what, I don't know, I don't know. I just have them for science, okay? But like, I don't know. No wonder this is so much heavier than this. I was like, it's good. yeah, but I don't know. I don't know. I just know that they're romance. I, d I don't know how you write a romance that's more than 900 pages. How am I gonna get through that? Like, I, is there world building, like, there's not even, there can't even be world building in it. Like, how do you fill up 900 pages with a romance? There's no need for explanation of magic. <laughs> I'm confused, but so intrigued at the same time. So we'll see. We will see. But yeah, I think these go together just like the other ones. I think there's some like 13 or 7. Is the next one seven? Binding 13 and Keeping 13, they have something to do with each other. These two have something to do with each other. And then I think there's Taming 7 or something coming out in like March or May. I've already pre-ordered it. I haven't even read the other ones, but I just, I don't know. I have a feeling that I'll like them. <laughs> if not, I'll sell them, it's fine. Last book that I have is an Afterlight one. And it's, wait, what? Second Chances in Newport Stephen. It has a very long title. This is by TJ Alexander. This is a cute, cute edition. Look at these edges. Look at the flamingos. Just look at the neon lights. <laughs> They're so cute. Um, redesigned cover, which is a lot better than the original cover. <laughs> in my humble, but also in this case, correct opinion. <laughs> we have a bar, a beach bar. It's Christmas. Uh, just in case you did not notice, there's Christmas decor. And we have, of course, as you would on a romance books, manatees in foiling on the naked cover, because that makes sense. It does make sense for some reason. I, I don't know why yet, but it does make sense. But I just love them. Like, how can you not look at them? <laughs> They're so cute. <laughs> anyway. Is it because the bar is called the manatee? The thirsty manatee, yeah. Do I remember exactly what this is about? No, but I think there's a single father, there's a guy who comes back to Newport Stephen, and they're kind of just like exploring a second chance with each other. So I re remember that's, I remember those parts of it. And I'm excited to check it out at some point. I think it sounds cute. So that's the last one of them. <sighs> I can't feel my legs anymore, I'm not gonna lie. Do I have slight regrets choosing to sit on the floor for an hour? Maybe a little bit, just like a tiny bit, teeny tiny. But I hope you enjoyed the book haul. If you've read any of the books and you wanna share your opinions on them, feel free to do so in the comments. I'd love to see what you think. And um, I don't know when the next book haul will be, but there'll probably be one at some point. I have slowed down on buying books. Um, I'm running out of space, <laughs> but, but there'll be more at some point. That's a promise. There'll be more. So 
I will see if I can leave links to all of the books in the description box down below if you want to check them out, but if I can't include all of them, I'm not going to, so I think I'll be able to though. So if you want to check any of them out, feel free to check out the description. That is all I got for you guys today though, so I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, feel free to hit the thumbs up. And if you want to see more videos like this from me, but also basically all of the other booktube stuff, definitely consider sticking around by clicking on the subscribe button. However, I'm going to leave you to it now, and also stop bothering my neighbors with my voice talking at like 11pm on a Monday. Apologies. And let them sleep, so. I hope you enjoyed this video, and I'll see you all in the next one. Bye-bye!